interact with us through our CATI 3D experience user group uh, community. And this is a swim community. And when you're a guest of multiple tenants, and so what, what I'm talking about when I say tenants is when your company purchases licenses for the 3D experience platform, they set up what's a virtual office space for you. That is your tenant, it's your address in the cloud. And on that, you have the ability to cre create these communities. It's called a 3D swim community. And you create those through the collaborative business innovator role, which is the foundational role when you log in. And when you are added to an additional tenant, you're gonna notice that some of these apps that you have um, will then get a little down arrow. And so this is how you can choose which tenant you want to fire up the application from. And here, if I click this, you're gonna see that I'm actually a member of four different tenants. When you're invited to ours, our tenant and our community, you're gonna see that you have your own tenant and another one, the CATI technical one. That's where you're going to insert a new app on a dashboard. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Uh, and that's how you can stay connected with us, even though you may be connected on one of your own internal communities uh, for your local use. So I'm just gonna close this. And this is a view of our CATI 3D experience user group. Bob, are you coming in? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm gonna just create a new tab on my browser, on my dashboard, and I'll go to my compass to show these apps, and I'll just do swim here. Okay. So for, for me, I'm like Todd, I'm part of multiple tenants. So I will actually grab multiple swims and put them on one tab. So I have one where I'm, I'm communicating with the SO systems, one I'm communicating with SOLIDWORKS, and one that I'm communicating with the computer technology support team. And that allows me in one spot to see all thumbnails of all the different things I'm, I want to know about in one place. Yeah, just like Randy was saying, you can drag as many indicators as you want onto a dashboard. So let's go back to here. Of course, I say that and then I, let's see here, let's grab a different one. Two different tenants showing on the same tab. So that's just an example of being able to, to keep different groups visible. If you're working with a client or customer that also has their own communities that you're a part of, you can access all that from the same tab in a dashboard. And just like my, my gas gauge going on, on empty, Todd just can click on one of them to maximize it inside that tab. And you're only looking at that one. So you don't have to look at like four different apps all at the same time. Right. So here's some of the benefits of getting connected with our user group community. So we're gonna be posting information that's gonna help you get more out of your subscription to the 3D Experience products. We're gonna be posting blog uh, articles on here, uh, tips and tricks, you know, best practices for using the platform. We're going to have different uh, links to training, most of which is free, at least at the beginning stages, uh, getting information about the, the base roles uh, and maximizing the benefits that you can get out of them. So you'll be able to come in here and interact. You can even um, post your own posts here. So just for example, I'm gonna welcome everyone here to this community. Welcome to the uh, CATI user group community. And let me go copy some copy paste stuff I have written out here. So this is just an invitation for you to get involved. And you know, you can create posts, you can share images. If you're interested in be a, being a presenter and showcasing your company and what you're doing at a future event, you can post that here, let us know through this, or let us know through that welcome, uh, 3DX welcome at cati.com post, and I'll just publish that. And just another tip, if you're in your organization and you're trying to get everyone's attention, you can click on this little down arrow here and you can highlight that post and it's gonna keep that at the top of that community so that everyone sees that as long as you wanna leave that up there. Another thing that you're able to do is to comment on a post. And if I wanted to get someone's attention, like you're trying to get a hold of Bob, you got a question about issue management or change actions or something like that, you can say at, Bob, and then everyone in our community 
is going to show up with the name Bob, and then you can choose who you're trying to get the attention of, and you can say, hey, Bob, um, can you help with issues? And Bob's got plenty of issues, so he's an expert at dealing with them. There you go. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's why the issues keep piling up, Todd. All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, so I just got a notification on my end that Todd just mentioned me in a post. So I'll come back and reply. Sure. Oh, yep. So here, oh, I've got some other. Now, Keith liked that comment and Bob sent me a reply. So I, I can stay up to date with, you know, what everyone's saying about my post and whoever is contacting me, right? Oh, hey, Rod, just now. Cool. Thank you so much, Rod, for making that post. I'm going to like that, and I'm going to like, where's Keith? Oh, Keith just liked it. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and close that and go back to here. Now, this isn't just to interact with us, but feel free to contact and share information with other users, too. This is about building the community. You might find someone in here that can provide a service that your organization needs. We're just trying to support everyone and, and get the most out of their uh, subscriptions here to the 3D Experience platform. One other thing I wanna show you about um, interacting on the, uh, in these SWIM communities is that you're, oh, is Bob calling me? Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna allow it to use my microphone. This is gonna be maybe some echoing. Oh, thanks for hanging up on me. So Bob made a phone call. So yeah, you're able to make phone calls. You can even do video calls through here. Um, you might also want to have a conversation with another user that's not going to be broadcast across the entire user group. You can do that here by going to the conversations tab. Notice here's my communities tab. You can go onto this conversations tab. Oh, uh oh, Bob sent me a little conversation. Hey, we need to talk. Uh oh, it's probably about that issues comment. Well, here's how you can create a new conversation. You would just hit, okay, the plus sign, and then type in the name of someone. So here's Randy, and you can type in multiple names, right? So I can say Randy and Bob, and uh, I can even create a topic for that. Um, say, okay, and now when I start Why do you keep talking this, about my issues, man? It's, uh, we're always talking about your issues, Bob even when you're not involved with the conversation. <laughs> so, hey, let's pick a time. Dot, 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 enter, right? So uh, that's gonna go out to everyone. And so you can stay current. They're gonna, they're gonna get a notification up here at their bell. This is where you can see what's happening in these communities and, uh, and keep you up to date. Not to mention the controls in the bottom right-hand corner you've got as well. So you could be working on other apps and say, sure, no problem. Let me open that, that file up in 3D Play, pan, rotate, and zoom, and look at it and see if that's what you're talking about. And then click on my initials in the bottom right-hand corner and continue adding to the conversation. All right. So I think that's pretty good on uh, the SWIM community. Uh, do you have any other thoughts, Bob or Randy, on interacting here? I mean, the only other thing that I can think of, we haven't, we've just focused on the community itself, but being able to connect our other applications into this community are pretty nice because I can be inside of SOLIDWORKS and share something to a community inside of here. I can be inside the X apps, the simulation apps, and post something and get comments from the team. Probably my favorite aspect of this is I am terrible with finding old emails. If someone sent me something three weeks ago, it's a research project for me. Mm -hmm. So because this is all inside the platform, I can go up to that nice white little search bar up there and type in information that was in that comment and it shows up. It's just not for 3D. It's for everything in the platform. Mm -hmm. Very and good. Like Todd's got right there. We can post 3D objects, photos, videos, lists for um, tasks to do, ideas, questions, surveys. So like we have a, we have a wiki up there right now with, mm -hmm. with documentation getting started and training. That's right, right here. 
And you can click on this and you can dig into the articles. These are all links to the training. Uh, again, most of this is free. So if you give uh, so, one of those a click, Todd, just go ahead. Sure. Right on. So this is going to take us to the 3D Experience EDU site, and you'll be able to explore the collaborative business innovator role. And, and because you're already logged into the platform, it passes your credentials over. Yeah. So you can see right there, all you have to do is hit log in. Right. And so here, then we can click this and see all the contents of that training. Let's give this a second to load. And there's, I'm ready to resume my training. So um, you even have links to take certification courses at the end of this. So you can prove to your employer that you actually know what you're talking about when it comes to the 3D experience platform. Unlike me, who I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, Bob mentioned, he touched on this. We're going to use this to get feedback from the community. So we will post surveys from time to time on topics of interest that you want us to showcase in future events. And if so, you don't see something, feel free to, to let us know what you're really interested yeah. in. Don't wait for us to ask you. And if you're not in this community, that email address, 3dxwelcome at cti.com, you can still come to the users groups. That's ask right. us ask us to, to do certain topics. We'll be happy to perform those topics for you guys. And we'll still be presenting this live so that you can come and be a part of it. Yeah. And you should be getting alerts once you've signed up. You should be getting alerts about the future events. Okay. So we, we're ready to go over to the next topic here, Todd? I believe so. So let awesome. me go ahead and fire up uh, that PowerPoint again, just so we can introduce our guest. That is right here. So we are joined by Rob Miles, who is the engineering design and lead technical uh, uh, rep at uh, Skinny Guy Campers. And um, let me just go ahead and uh, pull that Instagram up so we can see. I'm gonna slide this out of the way one second. And uh, Rob is uh, he's a graduate uh, in mechanical engineering from Tri State Trine University back in de December of 2005. And he's taken the time to join us. And uh, you may recognize uh, Rob and Skinny Guy Campers because they were a featured uh, presenter, at least topic of interest at this year's 3D Experience World. So they were interviewed in one of the general sessions about their work at Skinny Guy Campers. And he has uh, generously agreed to spend some time with us uh, talking about what they do and uh, a bit about how they're using the platform. So welcome, Rob. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you've been working in the RV industry for a while. When did you start getting into this industry? Yeah, so I actually um, started in the RV industry on the supply side um, just shortly after that graduation date you mentioned in January of 2006. Okay, so what were you interested in doing back then? Uh, what kind of role were you performing uh, when you got involved? Yeah, uh, when I first got into the industry, um, had title, kind of a general title of product product engineer. Um, I was helping oversee um, a lot of the the drafters that we had. I worked at a company that did chassis for towable recreational vehicles, so uh, pull behind the bumpers, all, as well as like fifth wheel and gooseneck styles. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a lot of that, um, and then I helped uh, run some of the major projects, as well as did some uh, a uh, simplistic uh, FEA analysis for customers on request. Okay, were you using CAD to to perform those tasks? Um, yeah, we were using we used some CAD. A lot of it we did in simple B models. Um, uh, product called Algor back then. Um, when I first started, the CAD software we were using was just simple AutoCAD 2D, um, and then uh, we did actually transition into SOLIDWORKS when I was at that company around the 07, 08, um, as 07 was going out and 08 was coming in. All right. Okay. So what brought you to Skinny Guy Campers? Yeah. Um, so there were some uh, connections um, with ownership here from uh, past uh, job experience that I had had. 
And so uh, that kind of brought me in as far as in the running for, or I guess as a recommendation, as they were looking for someone internally to do some design work. Um, prior to that, as they were just kind of getting a feel, is, is this going to be a go? And is this going to be something we want to invest in? They had just kind of outsourced and, and just had some, uh, I guess I want to say, contract type of design. Um, but I came in and, and got to see the product and got to see the kind of the vision of where they're hoping to take um, this product and the company and uh, was very interested and had the opportunity to come on board um, almost a year ago. It was early July of 2020. So amidst the um, pandemic that was still hitting everyone. Right. So go ahead, Bob. You got a question? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, I mean, doing something on the ground floor like this, usually hits a level of, of passion that you have about something. So, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's a passion for camping and being outdoors and just just being on your own, going back back in the back 40 and boondocking. Um, can, can you share a little bit of that? Yeah. Um, so, personally, I have a, a huge passion um, for the outdoors. It's been kind of something that's been instilled in me as a, as a kid. Um, a lot of the opportunities that we have, say in Indiana, more or less aren't aren't around the getting way out the beaten path because it just yeah. doesn't exist. There's too many of us that live in the state. Um, but I've had a huge passion in the outdoors, um, just being out there and enjoying it, um, as well as just having a passion of talking to like-minded people. And so one of the things that uh, kind of really drew me to that is we kind of think of our product as not necessarily um, the the end goal. You know, if you think of a typical camper or a typical RV, um, really what you're looking to do is it, it's made to camp, right? And a lot of them end up being parked somewhere for the majority of the season or just taken out um, to a local campsite. And it's just kind of, it's the end goal, right? Um, we look at ours as far as it, it's a tool to allow these people that are really going way out there, they've spent the time and money to outfit their trucks to get there. It's just, it's another thing for them to use to enjoy. Yeah, it's just like some of these pictures that are coming across. Yeah. For them to, for them to enjoy some of these things that, uh, um, that they're looking to do, right? That they're passionate about. So being able to, to provide that tool, um, Kind of internally uh, here at the company, we're all big truck guys, right? We're all, it's just kind of something we've all kind of had in our blood forever. So we feel like it's its part of that is, again, we're just, it's a tool, right? It's not a, it's not a means to the end. It's a, it's a tool to get them out there and, and allow them to enjoy that and get those, make those memories. And hopefully um, as things have started to clear up, there's a couple of overland shows. Uh, coming up in the fall that we're yeah. uh, we're looking to get to, and um, we're we're working on our first trial uh, production run. We're building a sample set of units to get out there and get some more testing. Um, as you can see, a lot of these pictures are coming from some field testing we've done so far, but we're looking to get them in the hands of a few more people and get some feedback, um, and just just love to enjoy and listen to their stories of of where they've been and what they've seen and what they've done and how a product like ours has enabled those types of adventures. So, I mean, I, I, like I mentioned, I just got back from a trip to South Dakota. So it months and months of just combing through all the, no offense, but crap, trying to figure out what, what do I put in my bin? What do I, what do I put in my pack? What do I put in the trailer? And it's like, is, is this actually going to hold up? Is it going to rust on me? I mean, those those are all tools, and I'm assuming things that you guys are trying to take in consideration. Um, what are some things you guys are really excited about that you you plan on putting into these these systems that are going to really make you a differentiator in the market? Yeah, um, so uh, there's kind of a twofold um, spot where we differentiate ourselves uh, versus a typical truck camper. We're trying to stay very low profile. Um, still allow some storage that could be in the bed of the truck um, and also not make a drastic impact on the handling characteristics of the vehicle. Um, so that kind of versus a, a typical truck camper, uh, that's kind of where we're differentiated 
And then from the overlanding side, um, there are a few products out there that that are kind of a self-contained, but a lot of the products are more like you're talking about racking and rooftop tents and other um, components that you're kind of all assembling um, to, to kind of have that full package. And what we're hoping to do is to, to offer that all encompassing or all in one piece that has all of those systems built in from uh, a heat and a hot water source and a stove. Um, we're working on the ability to have a shower. Um, we already have uh, hot and cold water access points, but we're, we're working on some of that. So uh, those are the kind of things, the conveniences of a typical RV, but um, to coin the phrase skinny down nice um, to, to a spot where uh you know it's not a huge impact on on your truck right because so, we're thinking we're thinking of ourselves as more as that truck accessory versus oh yeah that standard camper so i i speaking of skinny guy i am not a skinny guy i've never missed a barbecue plate um but that that back that fold out where where the actual bed is um being a big guy um, about how much weight is that thing going to hold? Yeah, so uh, we're going for ratings for uh, sleeping of two. Um, so our initial concept, um, we were comfortable with a rating of 500 pounds. Okay. Um, we're working on increasing that um, as we've uh, moved forward. And uh, so we have a few tests that we're going to do to to kind of certify that or get, give us a good peace of mind. But we definitely want it to rate for um Two to two and a half is kind of how we put it. You know, if nice. you have a have a small child, you know, you yeah. can get up there. Um, we're not nearly quite as big as like a traditional uh, queen style mattress up there, but but we are pretty close. Okay, nice. awesome. Thank you very much. Those are great answers. Yeah. So so what? How is this powered? Are you using? Uh, is this battery powered or is it? Are you running generators? Yeah. So. Uh, all of this is 12 volt power, so we're running off of batteries. Um, we're going to have a couple of options, um, more probably at an entry level. Uh, we'll probably look at like an AGM style of battery, um, and then we're looking to offer uh, uh, lithium and lithium ion, lithium cobalt. You know how all of those kind of kind of sure. run together, but a, but a lithium style of battery at at a higher end point. Okay. Uh, one of the things you, you mentioned just joining Skinny Guy during COVID, right? So in that time, what have has COVID affected that market? What are what are people who want to be out in the outdoors doing now since COVID struck? Are they yeah, wanting so yeah, uh the recreational vehicle industry, um, uh, which we are we uh, our manufacturing facility is located in Elkhart County, Indiana. That's essentially where the majority of recreational vehicles in North America are built. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of in the middle, uh, the heart of manufacturing. It's been, it's been booming just because of the popularity and, and where people want to be able to kind of have essentially their own, you want to call a hotel room, their own small house, be able to take it out and, and it's theirs and they don't have to worry about other people have been in there. Um, that's kind of sparked a lot of that. Um, but just in general, camping and and kind of getting away from crowded areas has really boomed a little bit um, due to this. Mm -hmm. So, what did COVID uh, affect you guys? Yeah, um, one of the things that has made it nice from everything being on a cloud perspective, uh, I did not work in the office one day in the month of November. And we're talking about a company that um, we just hired our fifth full-time employee within the last month. So we're not talking a big company, right? But just as small as we are, we had uh, two um, people come down, uh, unfortunately with COVID and then um, a couple of family members. So we pretty much did what we could to, yeah. to work from the house. And I pretty much spent the entire month of November working on designs and design iterations from my house. So the ability for everything to be up on the cloud and um, at a prior location where we had to have had to VPN in and then you deal with the struggle there, that was that made it very nice to, to have that kind of quick interface um, and not have to worry about connecting to a server, those types of things. So yeah, it did impact us. 
you know, great that the 3D experience could help with that. Um, what product did you guys decide to go with when you joined up, or what were they doing before? Uh, yeah, so before, it kind of was a little bit of contracting and, and just a little bit of um, done kind of in-house. Um, so they were using a couple of products that were from Autodesk. And the one thing I had seen at a prior um, prior employment, trying to evaluate something from a full business perspective of how the data is used and how it migrates from one department to another through the whole life cycle of it. Uh, we had evaluated SolidWorks and we were preparing to make a switch over there or trying to get all of the ducks in a row to present the case. And so when we were looking to, to buy a software, um, I had a strong recommendation just from the ability to scale up. You know, we're going to start small. We're going to start with just simple design software. But in the future, as we're ready to add more people and need to do things like assembly instructions and uh, share with vendors and um, ERPs and things along that nature, I just felt like the platform offered a lot more from scaling up and kind of being a whole business solution. So. I guess where do you see your yourself as as a design team and a company within the next five years when it comes to your business and your use of the platform? Uh, yeah, so as a business, we obviously want to have a lot of high hopes, right? We'd like to, I mean, even if you just think of if we could get a skinny guy on the back of one percent of all the pickup trucks built per year, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a big number, um, but we'd love to to get. I guess I'd love to get to the spot where we're ready to continually uh, develop some of these products and I can get a, a few more people in from, from my side and, and just kind of getting these 3D designs flushed out and being able to make, you know, support from a marketing perspective and a customer service perspective um, with uh, solid designs. Um, but we also don't know where we're going to go, right? We are in the outdoor industry. We're all big truck guys. So I'm sure that as we get these products developed and if we've done our job well and and they they do great out there, um, you know, maybe there's room to move. I, I, five years is a long time, right? Uh, the magic eight ball doesn't necessarily have an answer for that one. Yeah. Well, judging by the demand and what I've been seeing in the actual recreational vehicle community I, I i think once people see the product that you guys have to offer i think it's going to take off yeah so wish you luck with that yeah i appreciate that well so. i gotta jump in here because we're gonna run into the top of the hour here in about 12 minutes so i want to make sure we have time for uh visitors guests to ask questions uh to rob and to our team uh we did say we would be done around three i've already talked to bob we can stay a little bit longer uh, for for maybe platform questions, so we want to prioritize questions for Rob. So, um, Bob, do do we have any questions that we can go to at this moment? Um, I'm looking at a couple here. Um, I guess one question was, what's your favorite feature of the platform thus far, um, aspect wise? And that's for Rob. Yeah, that's for Rob. Yeah, I mean, really, it's just kind of the. The two features that have been inherent um, just from the start is the being a small company, lack of information technology resources, right? We didn't want to have to necessarily buy servers and set up servers in here and have someone to manage all of the software installation. So just as simple as the SolidWorks app, just as simple as a as a cell phone app that installs, and then just the the cloud storage have, have really been the two major things um, that I've enjoyed a lot. Again, having to work off-site quite a bit. Um, we have some design input that's being done out in another state, so the ability to access those files, that's been a, a big help, again, just dealing with what we've had to deal with. And uh, a follow-up from the same guy. Um, when, it, when it came to your initial setup, what was what was that that end user experience like? I mean, how long did it take you to get the the platform up and running? Really, just to just to get up and running, it was as simple as um, obviously going through all the the processes to to sign us up and get us enrolled. And the SolidWorks app was 
I, just as simple as almost a double click and then it brought up the, the installation wizard. And so I was there um, and we already had essentially an initial uh, file store set up. Um, I know through process of, of talking to a few guys, we set up a couple that just to separate some things. Um, but the setup from our side, uh, there was nothing to it. And I, I'd love to pride myself and say that I'm exceptionally mediocre at doing CAD design, but I am well below mediocre when it comes to understanding the inner workings of the computer and all the software. And I, I pretty much did it um, with just a few on my own or with just a few reach outs to tech support. That's good no to problems. hear. Yeah. Great. So I, I, I come from a very old, old school situation where it was an act of Congress to get anything done inside of a PDM tool. So if, if 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 it's, if it's that simple nowadays, I, I I really appreciate that. So thanks thanks for sharing. Yeah. Hey Rob, we have a we have another question. Now you mentioned that you guys were working on like an initial run of ten. Uh, are there any products available currently? And if not, when do you expect those to be uh, available on the market? Yeah. So there aren't any available currently. Um, we're trying to work through that trial production run um, just in the middle of April. We finally got moved in and settled into a, a new building. Um, prior to this, we were essentially just working in the owner's garage. So we kind of needed somewhere to kind of set up shop and, and start getting some inventory in. Um, so we're trying to work through all of those items, trying to figure out a flow beyond just one or two guys, essentially building prototypes, which if anybody's ever worked somewhere that you build an actual prototype, you know that it has no relation to how you'd actually a simple something yeah. from a production standpoint. Um, so those initial 10, um, I believe, are already sold through our first dealer. Um, but we're working as as quickly as we can to make sure that we have solid supply chain uh, mm -hmm. to get them out there in the market as soon as possible. Uh, at this point, I probably don't have a good answer yet, um, but we are trying to get there um, just as quick as we can because we we're ready to get them out there in people's hands and uh like i said i always come back to that but it, it's kind of one of the things again it kind of separates us i want to think about this as a tool that someone adds to their truck to be able yeah. to go out and experience things so so would you see yourself putting putting these as an option say with like a ford a dodge a gm like are these the dealer are these you know okay yeah or are oh. these universal like are, are do they universally fit whatever model you have? Yeah, so our goal is to be as universal as nominal truck bed size. So okay. if you say something along the lines of a five and a half foot box, a six and a half foot box, a five foot box, um, that's, we're trying to stay as universal as we can within that type of setup, right? Right, right. and I, there's a follow-up to, to the question Todd asked. Um, do, can you share a, maybe a goal MSRP on one of these things? Or is that something you guys are still working on? Um, yeah, it's something that we've worked on. Um, I know a goal kind of up at the upper end um, is somewhere in the 30s. Okay. Is a, is a fully feature set. Um, but I, at this point in time and the way that metal is going just in general, right? right. I mean, I... I follow a lot of people that are in the outdoor industry, um, and I just see that some of them are talking about if you've had something on order that they're working on, that they might, between your order being placed and them actually getting to you in line, you might have two or three price increases just because there's nothing they can do, right? The metal is coming in, and, and it's up. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, we're hoping it's for awesome. that to plateau or just come back down. But Yeah, it all sounds like supply speculation at this point. So. We, yeah, we, we, I, we won't we won't pin you down anything at this point in time, but we're we're excited to see what it's like. Yeah, I think anybody in the metal fab industry is probably experiencing that just as much, if not worse, than we are. Yep. So, Todd, you see any other questions coming over for, for I, Rob? I don't see any more for Rob. Okay, I don't see too many questions at all, but uh, we've got one or two. Uh, one here. So a customer will always have two tenants their own and the cati one can they have multiple of their own yes so you know 
a customer wouldn't be able to access our tenant if we invite them to it. We grant them access. They bring yep. their own license, right? They're using their license on our tenant. Um, yep. And they'll have that as long as they're a member. You know, if for some reason they want to quit being a member, we can, they can remove themselves. I believe we may have to help them remove themselves. Um, but yes, a customer could also have two separate tenants if mm -hmm. they wanted to. We do. Um, we have uh, two or three tenants, and that's a result of mergers and things like that, but it is possible. Yeah, I mean, another way to look at it is if you're a private contractor and you had your own licenses of the 3D experience, and then you contracted with somebody else, you they can invite you into their platform, and when they invite you, they can say, you're bringing your own license. You're not using mine. So and you're allowing them to use, you know, you're allowed to choose which licenses of what roles they can use on your exactly. platform. And you can silo what information you want to allow them to see and give them different levels of access so that they can see some, but not all of that data. Yep. And we'll be careful not to go too much down that rabbit hole. Because <laughs> Todd and I can talk for hours just on technical stuff. So, any other questions, guys? These these are good questions. Thanks for asking. So, okay. Not well, seeing any other action on that. No, I don't see any other questions. But we really do appreciate everybody coming today. This yeah. is the first in in a, in a great many users group meetings. Rob, thank you so much for your time. We know thank you're really you. busy. Um, yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Hoosier myself. So when you talk about going camping, it's usually how far do you drive your pickup back in the cornfield before you stop? So, um, yeah, I yeah. grew up in central Indiana. So yeah, I know about that one. So, um, thank you very much for your time. Thank really you, Rob. appreciate it. Um, and we look forward to working with you in the future on, on other projects and anything you need here from computer aided technology. So thank you. Yeah. And thanks, again, guys. appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so. Rob. And for anyone else that wants to get inf more information, please go ahead and email us at 3dxwelcome at cati.com. I'm going to put that down in the chat here so you can copy and paste that on your way out and uh, let us know how we can uh, present material that's interesting to you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. And if you need something, don't hesitate to give us a buzz.